All right, let me be real with you. I've been studying with intense focus and dedication for the past six months and have finally, finally hacked a way to study effectively and score big consistently. Okay, that was a lie. I said that just in case my parents are watching this, in which case, mom, I also haven't taken a bath in six days. It's called water burnout and it's a real thing. Anyway, while I admittedly am not the best candidate to advise you on how to study, I once scored a 99 in maths and shocked the hell out of myself and my teacher and unbeknownst to me, her hot daughter as well. I don't wanna brag, but we went on a couple of dates after this. But she later broke off after saying she felt a bit weird to date a guy who was her daughter's age. Let's start with highlighting. Of course, the first thing you do when you get a book is break its virginity with those sinful and ugly highlighters. While culture and history has taught us to do this, studies have shown that it is one of the worst possible ways to learn something. Also, trying to highlight with a pink highlighter in class to assert dominance and show who is the alpha male doesn't really work. My crush once walked past me with pink highlighter all over my nails and cheeks and to this day, she thinks I'm gay. The next thing you might do is take down notes. While noting down something unique that can help you remember stuff from the class is a good idea, ending up doodling the murder scene of your neighbor while simultaneously noting down the killing apparatus in the last page of your notebook is not. I mean, are you crazy? That's admissible evidence in court for heaven's sake. At least hide it behind a portrait of Krishna or Jesus before you go ahead. In these situations, and let me give you a pro tip here for which I won't charge you anything this time. What I do is, whenever I have to hide something precious, I hide it in my box of condoms. For one, I don't have to think about another secure location and two, I don't have to open it again. The last ineffective form of studying is of course a fan favorite. Cram those chapters one night before the exam. You will stop doing it once I tell you an incident that happened to me. Because of sleep deprivation after spending the whole night studying and also lack of confidence, I decided to take an abridged copy of my textbook to the exam hall. What I did not realize was that what I took to the exam hall was not a copy of the abridged textbook but a copy of the July edition of Playboy. I spent the next 90 minutes not trying to cheat but trying to hide the copy away from my teacher. And because I sweat a lot when I see hot naked women, my teacher grew incredibly suspicious that winter morning. Needless to say, I was caught. He snatched it from me and said he was going to report it to the principal and walked out. What I don't understand, however, is how long he took to report it even though the principal's office was right next door. Okay, so you don't want me to highlight, nor do you want me to take notes or pull an all-nighter or cheat. So what exactly do you want me to do? I'm glad you asked, you non-existent audience member. Here are three techniques to get your photo in a prominent local newspaper besides from being framed for murder. The first one is called the Feynman technique and what it essentially says is to teach everything you know about a topic to a friend. This way, you will not only revise the topic but also identify gaps in your own knowledge. While this is a solid plan and is backed by enough science, it doesn't work for me because you need friends for this in the first place. Besides, it reminds me of how I introduced this technique to my ex who, in search of friends for the Feynman technique, met her current boyfriend. The next effective way of studying is called active recall. What you basically do here is try and learn a topic in the form of question and answer instead of rereading the same stuff over and over again. This activates some biological neurons in your brain equivalent to twice the amount of post-nut clarity which helps you remember better. Personally, this is a way better technique than the Feynman because I don't have to make new friends in order to score the 90th percentile. The last study method is known as spaced repetition. Now I could explain this with a bunch of graphs and psychoanalysis but thankfully, this isn't a TED talk and you are not here to waste 15 minutes of your time to hear another virgin speak about how nerdy things are cool. So, let me put it this way. Treat your studies like you treat your girlfriend out for dinner. You do not satisfy her with an all-you-can-eat buffet one night before you plan to bone her. Instead, you take her out on a Sunday, then maybe a couple of days later, then perhaps a week later before she is convinced that you have a fat wallet. Similarly, you don't study one night before the exam and expect great results. Instead, you learn bit by bit regularly in spaced intervals. Of course, after the exam or the sex, you can chuck them both with absolutely no consequences. I am forever staying single, ain't I?